The tax landscape in Oman is undergoing a lot of transformation and the tax authority has recently announced the implementation of value-added tax or VAT from April 16th. Now we know you have a lot of questions on your mind regarding this and to answer all of that we are joined today on the morning show by a tax expert. Joining us today on the task morning show is Mr. Alkesh Joshi, partner and MENA Energy Tax Leader at Ernst & Young Oman. Mr. Joshi, welcome to the morning show. Absolute pleasure to be here interacting with all of you. Now to start off, a lot of people are curious about what exactly is VAT or value added tax. For someone who's not from a business or commerce background, how would you explain this to a layman in a nutshell? It's a very good question. Uh, you know, value added tax as, it, as the term refers, uh, in the supply chain, when goods and services are changing hands, uh, value is being added to the goods and services and on that value the tax that is levied is called value-added tax. So VAT should be looked at uh, in three different buckets as I would put it as. So you have the standard rated bucket which is the 5% bucket and as the VAT law defines all goods and services will be in that bucket unless they are specifically excluded as zero rated or exempted. So the other two buckets are zero rated and you have the exempted. So the government has uh, been very generous and has taken the interest of common people at large uh, and therefore they have issued a list of 488 uh, products which are going to be zero rated. So you know basic foods such as uh, rice, wheat, uh, you know flour, vegetables, fruits, meat, is all going to be zero rated including medicines so zero rating means VAT is charged but at zero percent okay. so the end consumer does not end up paying VAT uh, whereas the input VAT that is going to be charged on those products can be fully refunded and claimed back by the business from the government so that's a kind of a relief to the to the end consumer and the third bucket which is the exempted bucket is uh, having things like education healthcare loans, so banks providing loans to uh, end consumers, all of that is exempted. So the end consumer cannot be charged VAT on those uh, sub services, whereas those businesses will be charged VAT and that will become an end cost for them. I think a lot of our viewers would like to know how VAT or VAT will impact the end user. It is not a tax of the organization most of the times. It is a tax which is borne by the end consumer or the end user. So if I take a simple supply chain, if I was to import goods from outside, I would pay customs duty at the port and along with customs duty, I will, put, I will also pay VAT, which is your input VAT. When I'm making an onward supply to a retailer, assume I'm a wholesaler and I'm making it to a retailer, the retailer, I will charge him VAT on my sale. The retailer will take that as an input VAT. So the VAT that I have charged to the retailer, I will set off the VAT that I paid at the customs port and the difference I will go and pay to the government. The retailer will do the same when he's making an onward supply to an end user, such as you and me, if we go to a retailer to buy goods and services. Now, what measures have companies taken in the past few months or years in the run up to the implementation of VAT in Oman? So a lot of companies went about reviewing their IT landscape and making changes to the IT systems. The next bit which is very important is uh, training people. Uh, you know VAT type of attacks has not existed in our countries. Uh, so people have not been exposed to how VAT should flow through. Uh, so there's been a lot of effort in training people uh, with the knowledge of how VAT will flow through the organization. Uh, and therefore they, uh, they need to be upskilled in order to be able to administer uh, you know, this kind of a tax reform. Now, um, how would this impact small and medium enterprises in Oman? If the small and medium enterprises meet a certain level of revenue threshold, which is the turnover threshold, then they are required to register mandatorily. Uh, you know, 38,500 rials is the annual turnover limit for registering for VAT purposes. So if their turnover is lower than that, then they are treated as not VATable enterprises. 
So small and medium enterprises, because of their limited ability to invest in the backend infrastructure such as uh, ERP systems, uh, proper processes and procedures, find it a little bit difficult uh, to implement uh, a tax reform like VAT. Now, Mr. Joshi, how would VAT be expected to benefit the government and what is the income that's expected um, in one year? From a fiscal reform perspective, uh, this has been the single largest uh, reform that the government has embarked on. Uh, you know, the government is expecting to collect about 350 to 400 million of money reals uh, as, as a full year of VAT collection. So VAT is a very important tool for the government to be able to manage its, its budget uh, and continue to provide social services uh, to its uh, subjects in the country. Uh, such as you know infrastructure, healthcare, education. Uh, so all of this money that is going to get collected will get funneled and channelized towards all of those projects as well. Mr. Joshi, what are your last thoughts on the changing fiscal landscape in Oman? Yeah, so we've been in a no tax or a low tax environment for a very long time. Uh, hence, uh, it's very natural for people to be a little bit apprehensive about taxation. But taxation is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you know, tax allows uh, the subjects who are living in this country an opportunity to contribute towards nation building and that's how it should be approached. Uh, a lot of other tax reforms have taken place. Uh, the economic stimulus plan that got announced by the government uh, to kickstart the economy and attract foreign direct investment has introduced certain uh, tax exemptions, tax rebates, postponement of tax payments uh, with, a, with a aim to support businesses. Uh, during the current uh, challenging times. Uh, so a lot of changes are taking place. Uh, I would encourage uh, you know the uh, businessmen, uh, people who are entrepreneurs running their companies to look out for all these changes which are taking place uh, so that they are better prepared uh, to deal with this challenge in the time to come. It was lovely talking to you today. Thank you so much for taking time out and joining us on the TAS Morning Show. Pleasure. <laughs>